Hey, welcome everybody. This is the Daily Recap, starring Renmar this time as we have and start recapping day number one graphic. <laughs> <laughs> Just make Amy do way more work than necessary. But yes, day number one was very interesting here after the wild cards. A lot of interesting things have happened here at the group stages itself. And to kick things off, let us start with a little... Oh man, the timetable has updated because it's day number two. But... Um, let's start with the general matches, right? Number one, we'll start with it's AP Bren versus the Burmese Ghouls. Now, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on this? Because so far, I think everybody was expecting AP Bren to win this particular matchup. Oh, yes. But Burmese Ghouls, honestly, like, maybe not the execution, but the draft itself looked pretty decent. Yeah, and I think that's been a theme for a long time for Myanmar teams. Like, they know how to draft. Uh, the question is, like, uh, can they really match the movements? In M2, that was answered by Burmese Ghouls with a definitive hell yes. And then Falcons answered that with a hell yes as well in M4. Uh, but this Burmese Ghouls squad now, drafting, definitely there. Movements. Uh, I don't know if it's just the lack of, how do I say this? Um, not courage, but it's like that decision-making of just being so sure. Because sometimes there's hesitation in some of the things that they want to do execution-wise. Decisiveness. Decisiveness there. Thank you. That's a word I always forget. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. decisiveness sometimes may be lacking just a little bit. I, okay, I can get it for, like, game number mm -hmm. one. But, like, game number two went up to at least 26 minutes, 26 minutes, yep. 38 seconds, which does kind of give the indication, like, they had a rough idea of what they wanted to do. And yeah. to be fair, it doesn't help that when we were, when we were casting the games, that they had that piece of content. That the piece of content the Burmese goals might not have even made it to M5 itself. Oh, yeah. So that that alone, we're like, man, we want to root for AP Brand, but we kind of don't at the same time. Yeah, the way the that video just painted Burmese goals, it's like, yeah, as a Filipino, and because every Filipino loves underdog stories. Uh, we love that. Like all our biggest telenovelas, man. Oh, many underdog stories. Yeah, that kind of adds on that I think yeah. about it. All right, fair. We move on to the second game, which is going to be Fireflux Esports up against Team SMG. And let me tell you, I'm disappointed with Team SMG. Yeah, me a little bit as well, because um, I had really high hopes for them. I, I thought they'd go into the series and just shock Fireflux. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Because they kind of went into, honestly, they had a couple of, like, the early stages of wild cards was mm -hmm. kind of rough. But then afterwards, it kind of looked like, you know, they had moments that they were just basically smurfing once they got into the groove yeah. of things, right? But Fireflux, man, some interesting uh, some interesting picks coming out from Rosa, like uh, to Rizla in the mid lane, for example. Yeah, and you can only pull that off if you're a decisive team. And that's what I love about Fireflux Esports. Like, they are a decisive team. They know what to do. Uh, their movements uh, don't show any hesitation. They just go for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, to pick something like that just goes to show how confident they are. And that's what I've always... Or that's how I see now uh, Fireflux as uh, with that one series they had. They are... Uh, decisive and solid team while smg looks like they've sort of got into this with a different idea of how they want to play and that might actually be uh, messing them up a bit they, they're because they're relying a little bit too much on sasa when they don't need to because sasa will always just be a surefire hit mm. so you don't always need to just uh, put all your eggs on the sasa basket sometimes you just have to put um commit elsewhere so that sasa can because sasa will shine help the other shine I can understand that sentiment because like, especially for the regular season of mm -hmm. the MPL MY, this is the first time we actually saw Team SMG like kind of break out of that comfort zone of like, mm -hmm. oh, we like everything structured. Now it's like, oh, we can actually push advantages. Mm -hmm. We're really going to choke you out really, really quick. Yeah. And obviously, sometimes it fails because it's part of the process of learning. Mm -hmm. But we once Wildcard started to come on through and now even after this particular game against Fireflux Esports, it's like, man, where did that go? Where did that peak, you know, yeah. that, that, that step that they were leaping up to go? And I don't know. That's why I'm a little disappointed at the very least. Now we move on to our next game. Ooh, this one. Geek Fam ID versus the Homeboys. Wow. Third match of the series. Yeah, tough for Geek Fam because uh, they were looking really good. And then it was just one uh, attempt to get a even bigger lead with a base dive. Third turret, top lane if I'm not mistaken. Just punished. Then out of that, Homeboys just pushed out and geek fam looked a little bit rattled because well we almost got wiped out trying to end the game 
And then homeboy just took it. And the game number two, that Florin, um, or the Minotaur of Sorn, just TPing on everyone. Yeah, just uh, really rough for Geek Fam. And it's like, I don't know, a lot of questions. Like, have they recovered from their shocking MPLI exit? It, it seems like right now, not completely. All I can say is, though, is that out of everyone right now in Geek Fab, I think Marky is like the most uh, solid right now. The most stable. The most stable, yeah. Uh, I've been hearing a lot of things like the Beloisky effect. Like he dies like seven times in the game and all of a sudden everybody else on his team is doing well because he sacrifices his yeah. life that many times. But I think that at least for Geek Fam ID, I think the shocking part was, I think our game number one really rattled them a little. Like 27 yeah. minutes, they were destroying homeboys in the early game. Like absolutely dunking on us. And then for some reason, like, you know, for us in the back room, a couple of blackouts later, then it's like, what, what, what yeah. happened? <laughs> yeah. why, why did they suddenly win? Well, and then you rewatch the game and it's just like, oh my gosh, like how did it slip through their fingers? Yeah, uh, that's something that, uh, it's been something that's, that Geek Fab has suffered from, not mm -hmm. just like in recent memory. As far as I can remember from their scenarios in MPL Season 10 when they didn't even make it to the playoffs, but they almost made that Cinderella run, make it into the playoffs for Season 11, but then first round exit. It's... You see that happen often to them, and it's surprising to see that it's still happening after the heights they've reached in IDS 12. PTSD, maybe. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, yeah. That yeah, might yeah. be a factor. Yeah. I'm happy that the homeboys were able to win the game, and more importantly so, like, I just hope that they do well in the knockouts, right? Malaysian teams in group stages, we usually get, get away with it, but, like, mm -hmm. at a certain point, that's when the shenanigans have to stop. But we move on to the final series of the, that day, which was AP... Uh, oh, no, sorry, not AP Ren, but it was actually, uh, let me just pull it up, Onyx versus BTR Suns, or what we call the stompening, as some may, as some may say, because it's stomping. Dude, that game was like, they were getting collapsed, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 56 seconds, 13 mm. minutes, 22 seconds. This is what the draft. Uh, this is what the draft was to kind of jolt, jolt to memory. Because yep. game number two, it just felt like they were they were having too much fun. Okay, boy. <laughs> that's Kid boy. that's a, all I can say, man. I mean, back to back MVP performances, and I think that's like a unanimous thing all around the world that if anyone was gonna win MVP of that series, game one, game two, it, it was Kid boy. Like he's he's in a completely different zone right yeah. now. Uh, I feel like. The memories of M4 might be haunting him a little bit. And after all the wins, it's good to see that Kiboy is still hungry. Like, still really starving to him. Like, even though he's already won so much, like, their, their job's not finished until they're champions of the world. And you can just see it in the rumor of Onik. Yeah, the golden road. The golden, golden road. road. They're so... I mean, it, it'd, be it'd be an incredible story, personally, for me. I yeah. think, you know, even though they are the overall favorites and kind of taking that, like, villainous role, even, mm -hmm. almost, because everybody's, like, eyeing them for, like, winning so many tournaments. Yeah. And then you cut to, like, some of the powerhouses, like AP Brand, for an example. Mm -hmm. Then it's like, who's going to win, you know? Who's going to bring it back home? Yeah, I think the entrance of Kiboy was really telling because, dude, he's, like, the... Only dude I remember from day number one that while entering, he just stared into the camera. He was looking into the camera, so it was just like... <laughs> the only time he looked away was when the camera was like... When panned to his teammates behind him. I feel like if Kiboy really was feeling it, he would have followed the camera anyway. <laughs> That's what I thought he was, was going to do too. Yeah. He's just like following it the entire way, just like motion control. Yeah, they're trying to get Kyrie into the frame, but then Kiboy's just like, Hello, <laughs> it's my time, my spotlight. Yeah. <laughs> good times, good times. But yeah, that is going to be the daily recap here for day number one here at the M5 World Championship group stages. Stay tuned. We got another one coming for day number two. This is Remar. Where can we find you? In the Philippines and at Esports Reptara for my socials. At Redmore Santa Cruz on YouTube. Uh, 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 on the screen. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you another day.